This is the download from Sounds Profitable, your daily source for the essential news of the business of podcasting. Brought to you by Spreaker from iHeart. I'm Tom Webster. Here's what you need to know for today, Monday, November 13th. First in rain news, spoken word audio. The spoken word audio report from NPR and Edison Research is out, reporting record high consumption and the share of podcasting is growing. It's time to look at the fifth annual Spoken Word Audio Report, uh, something I worked on actually from its very beginning. Built from a nationwide survey of over 4,000 people age 13 and up. 48% of respondents listen to spoken word audio in some form on a daily basis, an increase of two percentage points from last year. For the first time in the study's history, mobile devices have overtaken AM FM radio receivers as the top way that people listen to spoken word content on a daily basis, this year scoring 39% compared to AM FM radio receivers at 35%. Podcasts have now grown to over a third of daily time spent listening to spoken word at 36%, and when respondents are listening at home, that podcast percentage jumps to 40. From Digiday, as the strikes end and Hollywood gets back to business, what happens next for advertisers and ad buyers? Well, as of last Wednesday night, SAG-AFTRA has reached a tentative agreement with the AMPTP and the long-running actor strike is finally over. Suddenly, the advertising world, once again, has the ability to use talent when promoting projects. One potential knock-on effect of the strike for advertisers is the availability of reality-based content, as shown by reality TV's boom in the late 2000s and early 2010s, from the sudden injection of ad dollars during the 2007 WGA strike. Buyers interviewed by Digiday anticipate a wait-and-see response to see how media mixes might change once TV and film return to baseline content production. In Marketing Brew, Americans to brands look inward before weighing in on politics. A new report from Morning Consult shows that 53% of Americans surveyed agree corporations should not involve themselves in political and or cultural issues, echoing sentiment from 2020's election playbook study built of surveys conducted from 2019 to 2023. Brand political expectations do skew younger, with 41% of Gen Z and millennial respondents feeling that brands should use their influence to impact political and or cultural issues and 39% believe corporations should not get involved with the same. Podcasting's audience is largely millennial and Gen Z listeners, making it a logical bet for brands looking to dip their toes into politically charged campaigns this election season. From our friend Ashley Hamer at Descript, how I got 10 times the YouTube subscribers by adding video to my podcast. Ashley Hamer, managing editor at Descript, reports her results on adding video content to her podcast, Taboo Science. From early 2022 through March of this year, the podcast auto-posted to YouTube in the form of audiograms with a static image of the show art plateauing at around 30 subscribers. After fully incorporating filming and editing video into the standard Taboo Science episode workflow and optimizing the YouTube channel with proper SEO, thumbnails, and regular uploads, the subscriber count climbed for 370 over four months. While there's an entire industry in guessing how to appease the YouTube recommendation algorithm, evidence, including Hamer's efforts, shows running video podcasts like a YouTube channel with regular uploads of visually engaging content will lead to the algorithm picking up the channel more often and recommending videos to new viewers. As for the rest of the news, Soundtrack hires digital audio vet Michael Fisher. Congrats, Michael. Uh, The nomination deadline for the Ambies is November 17th. Spooler has launched a map tool allowing podcasters to mark locations mentioned in a podcast on an embeddable map. The Podcast Marketing Academy has published a new marketing trends report. And Spotify has revamped their connected TV app with more features and a UI similar to the desktop and mobile versions. And finally, today's data snapshot from the Sounds Profitable Research Database. Which factors related to products and services when choosing podcast publisher partners 
are the most important? This was a question asked in the podcast opportunity of a sample of podcast buyers from agencies uh, and brand buyers directly. And what it says is that above all else, ad creative is the biggest driver for potential buyers, 45% compared to offering targeting at 38% and pricing at 32%. Now, why that's cool? Podcasters work very hard to make 90% of their audio the best it can be. Applying that same discipline to the other 10%, the ads, can be a competitive advantage. Be sure to check out the links to every article mentioned right in your podcast listening app or at soundsprofitable.com, where you can also subscribe to the newsletter version. The download is written and produced by Brian Barletta, Gavin Gaddis, and me. This episode is hosted on Art19. For Sounds Profitable, I'm Tom Webster. Download us again tomorrow.